episode. How y'all doing? Welcome new subscribers. Welcome existing subscribers. Welcome. Um, today is the uh, day I promised I would do the full end-to-end -end, um, detailed run-through of both the oil and filter change and air cleaner change. Specifically, I'll be installing uh, replacing the OEM original filter with a new K&N filter. Um, the process is the same whether you're using a K&N or another brand or OEM. The process is exactly the same. It's a drop-in replacement. The only difference is if you get a K&N or some other reusable uh, filter, such as the K&N, uh, there's another step in there around how to recondition the filter. And I've done that in some other videos that you can see. Uh, maybe I'll link to it here and uh, uh, and certainly when it comes time to do this one again in the next go around I'll I'll try to record that too so with regard to the air filter change the air filter is also pretty straightforward there's a little more work involved in that the air box where the filter is located is under the tank so we have to swing the tank back uh, we have to take out about a thousand screws to take off the cover of the air box, and then there's the filters, no problem. One thing that makes it slightly difficult is that to swing the tank back, you've got to get the fairing out of the way. There's two ways to do it, and it's fairings on both sides, by the way, and there's two ways to do it. One, take both fairings off. Um, that will certainly, that's certainly the recommended way. Um, some folks are a little hesitant to do that, and I understand why these are Super expensive, super fragile, and there's little tabs on there that love to break off uh, if you don't do it right. Um, is there an option? Uh, the answer is yes, kind of. Uh, there is a way to move the fairing out of the way just enough to rotate the tank back. I'm going to, I'm going to try to show you that one today. Actually, I've never tried it with this one. I did on the 2012 uh, a uh, number of times, but I assume it will be the same. So I'm going to try to show you how to do that on 2016. So, without further ado, let's get wrenching. So here it is. Everything you'll need, I think, uh, to do both the air filter and the oil filter and oil change. Less the oil, obviously it's not sitting here. Uh, simple hand tools, torque wrench, new parts, some rags, and um, and that's all you really need. Specialty tool, if we do need it, would be the oil filter wrench to get the old oil filter off and uh, possibly to put a new one on depending on which model you'll get. And we'll go through that. So um, let's, uh, let's get going and uh, we'll start with the oil change. So first thing I do is get the bike up on the lift. Um, I have a center stand by ABBA. I did a review on that. I'm torn as to whether or not I like it or not. Uh, it's a lot more work than normal rear, uh, you know, like a pit bull or rear, st rear spool stands. I can't use those because I have those as well, but I can't use them as a recall because I uh, had a the mount. I really don't live on a busy street, but hmm. uh, the mount for the rear spool on one side snapped off because the spool is just about an eighth quarter inch too long and uh, under high compression on the rear uh, shock the um, exhaust system hit it and snapped it right off so uh, unless I feel like welding it back on I am without rear spool so I'm gonna try the ABBA stand hopefully it won't be in the way but let's find out the stand is in two pieces it's got this one piece here with an extendable bar for leverage and another piece that goes on the other side of the bike, one piece goes on this side. It's got these uh, adapters, these pegs. Now you can see these, these pegs um, that are custom for your bike. They come in tons of different versions for different bikes. Uh, they go in these little adapters here and they go and little peg goes in the swing arm bolt hole on both sides. So this one goes on this side. Like 
this. This one goes on the other side. We get the other peg in the uh, other side of the swing arm bolt. And this um, this part of the uh, lift goes over the other end of the bar from the other side. The idea is you tighten this up, which takes the slack out of it, and then on the other side we grab the, hook, the bar and lift the whole bike up. So here we go. Just like that. Hey, okay, so we got it up on the lift. Uh, the stand here uh, is well back of the drain bolt, so that's what I was worried about, but not even close. So that should be a problem. So the other thing you'll need is uh, to one, warm up the bike, which I've already done. It's good to get the oil warm before you drain it. And two, uh, get a catch basin for the oil, because that's not good on the floor. Okay, at this point it's probably a good idea to get a pair of work gloves on because uh, you're going to deal with oil and uh, get your rags, get your rags ready because who knows. So the drain bolt comes with a crush washer, this aluminum washer here. They do exactly as they are advertised by name, they crush, uh, which completes the seal uh, against the oil pan so you don't leak. It is recommended that you never reuse crush, crush washers. They're cheap, get a bag full of them, you'll be all set. So we'll get a new one on there to replace this guy. That round canister right there, that is our oil filter. So we're gonna have to torque that off. We're gonna use our, you can see it does not have a nut on the end. So we're gonna use our uh, oil filter wrench and try to get that thing off. Okay, that's off. So we want to let that drain completely. Okay, there's a here's a bag of uh, crush washers I picked up from my local dealer. Uh, these are the original Kawasaki parts. Um, there's the part number if you are taking notes. And so I just you know I don't know if they're I don't know 50 60 cents a piece. So you know I got half a dozen. We're good, right? A couple of bikes, they both take the same one. We're good for years. So keep them around, really handy. No excuse not to put one on. Okay, we got our drain bolt and our new crush washer. So we'll just hand tighten this and then we'll get the torque wrench on it. All right, and we have our torque wrench. We've got her set to, let's see. I got her set to 17, I don't know if you can see that, 17 foot-pounds. Here we go. 
Okay, let's talk oil filters for a second. This is OEM Kawasaki uh, replacement oil filter. It is part number 16097-0008. Comes out of the box looking like the filter we just took off. I'll get out of the little bag here for you. All right, easier said than done. There we go. And so, you know, it's an oil filter. It's decent construction. I mean, I don't know. It's it's OEM parts. The thing to notice about it, though, is it doesn't have a nut on the end. It is just a canister. All right? Okay. We are replacing that with a high, high flow filtro racing oil filter, the HF303RC. If you look very closely, not there, here. I don't know if this will come out, but it is a Kawasaki replacement for the 16097-008, as well as some other ones, 00411, um, etc. But it's a direct replacement, so no problem with that. As it comes out of the box, It looks like this. And good construction again, but notice that. That makes taking it on and off a whole lot easier, especially when you put a torque wrench to it, you got something to torque onto, as opposed to an oil filter wrench, you really can't torque, you just do it hand tight, as what I do. But we're gonna go ahead and torque this down uh, since we can, and we'll put that on. So with our new high flow filter, uh, here it is out of the packaging. The way I put on a new oil filter is I like to put oil in the filter first. I don't know, half, three quarters of it, because it wets all the, all the um, filter uh, components in there and gets them nice and wet so that when we fire up the bike for the first time, uh, it doesn't have to fill this filter before getting oil up into the rest of the engine. Now, do I know this for certain? No. Um, are there issues with um, air locks and air? Uh, no, never had one. Uh, people have made comments on it. I, I've never experienced, maybe there is, but I've never had that problem. And I've done, oh God, I don't know how many oil filter changes. This particular filter, I don't know about the OEM, but this particular filter also has a backflow protection so that oil stays in the filter and doesn't flow back into the engine, just on a normal use, so that when you're starting it cold, there's oil, again, already in the filter, and it doesn't have to fill it up before it gets it up, you know, pumps it up to the rest of the engine. So I like to fill it up uh, before I put it on. Not all the way, but you'll see. And speaking of oil, uh, that's my brand of choice. I've been running it um, forever in all my bikes, um, and everything comes out squeaky clean. Any good 100% synthetic is going to give you great results. Uh, I'm not pitching this by any stretch, but um, I'm sticking with it. It's really run really well, so there you go. So before you put your new filter on, you want to take a little bit of that oil and run it around the seal, get that moist. And you'll want to clean off the surface that we're going to, that this mounts to of any dirt and other oil and whatnot. Just drag that off before you spin this on. It's actually going to be hard to get in there with my hand and the camera. So with our torque wrench set to 21 foot-pounds per spec, and a long extension. Just tighten down the oil filter. Double check, I'm set, yep, I'm set up 21, yep, okay.
we go. The bike takes 4.1 quarts of oil. So there's probably always a little bit left in the engine somewhere. So I just filled it up with almost four quarts. And you can see by the sight glass here, I think you can see that the sight glass, uh, it's about halfway or so cutting the sight glass. Now that will go down as we start it up and uh, cycle the oil through there. So we'll go ahead and run it a little bit. Uh, make sure we don't have any leaks, then we'll come back, let it sit for a second, and then recheck the, and top it off if we need to. So you can see, she sucked her down, so we need to top it off. Good. We're level set. We're done. That completes the oil and filter change. Uh, it's the most basic of uh, maintenance services you can do other than tire pressure checks, uh, putting gas in it, and servicing the chain. So uh, it's a good one to know. Uh, it's a very simple one to do. So you all should be able to do that with no problem. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. It's, um, it's pretty basic as you can see. Uh, just take your time. Uh, don't be afraid uh, if you spill a little oil, that'll happen. So uh, just keep the towels handy and uh, move on. Speaking of moving on, let's start tackling the air filter.